Thank you, everyone. So you can see here a wafer. Maybe you can see some squares. Maybe you can see some blue. Around the edge, there's blue tape. In the center, dyes 75 microns thick. This was done all through our process that I'll show you in a second. But we got to think about things a little bit more seriously, right? Silicon, silicon carbide, they keep getting thinner year by year by year. One really good example is the Apple 9, right? If you strip off the top epoxy, there's a chip. And that chip has a lot of stuff going on. It's got RAM, it's got CPU and all that. If you get everything else out of the way, though, that silicon die is only about 50 microns thick. And when things break, especially silicon dyes, it's an expensive problem to have. But people want to go thinner than 50 microns thick and they're yield constrained because too much breaks. So we have a technology that releases wafers without leaving a residue. Imagine if, um, you will, we remove the glue from in between. That's, that's it. And it's gone, and they can separate without cracking. It's a very simple idea. So our goal is to debond thinner materials with improved yield. Now, you could imagine a canonical process flow. I'm not in the business of building wafers. I'm in the business of debonding wafers. So I imagine they go into the front end of the line, pattern, 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 map out the good dyes, know the bad dyes. So now you know what matters on that wafer. Then you have to start to finish the wafer. I mean, this thing does, you know, doesn't fit in a phone. You've got to chop it into chips. You've got to grind it down. And then after sectioning into the dyes, you pick it up. Package it, you test it, and voila, we're off and running. We've got a chip. But there's two problems here. When they grind it, they grind it on some really sticky tape. And it's supposed to be UV releasable, but peeling off a thousandth of an inch thick, one foot diameter disc from something that is supposed to work doesn't really sound like a good idea. And in the industry today, they can't get below 35 microns. If they could, we'd have a lot more memory in our memory sticks. We've thought that the best thing we could do is to break into one of the semiconductor-like lines, get them to give us a pattern wafer, which we bond to our carrier using our process, grind it, dice it, attach it to dicing tape, and then debond our carrier and give that tape and frame solution back to the customer so they can take it into the packaging foundry, pick up their chips, put them where they need to. Our technique is very simple. Shown here is a wafer that it just free falls under its own weight, right? So I calculated the mass of the silicon and came to the conclusion that for that to just fall like that, it had to be a change of five orders of magnitude in the adhesion strength of the material. Debonding time is less than an hour. Um, thickness range, we've done under a micron to hundreds of, mic hundreds of microns. We've also taken that process and applied it to a full wafer. Um, if you want, please come over to the poster session later. I'll show you this beautiful wafer, or it's the second one. Um, we have the ability to monolithically transfer very thin dyes from the grinder through dicing to de uh, deliver to our customers a tape on frame solution that goes into pick and place machines but our solution is going to allow you to have dyes that are down to the microns in thickness or less. So we have a strate strategic partner. We have a uh, market estimate of about $2 billion. The value that we add is that we eliminate surface tension effects. We have products we're building, bonding and debonding equipment, proprietary carriers that will be loaded to with glue, and right now, we're looking for somebody who has a wafer problem. Does anybody have a problem with wafers less than 25 microns thick? I'd like to see a show of hands if there's anybody in the room. Seriously. Because I'd like to help those people. And I know those people are all in a foundry that I never get to see. So the best thing I can think to do is keep it all in the Northeast, and let's go for it. There's some reasons for the Northeast, namely um, the power electronics industry is actually here, so it's a good place. 
We have a plan to get this to market. Um, the main barrier is entrenchment. You can't just go to the semiconductor industry and say, hey, I got this for you, it's awesome. They're like, no, you have to do a lot more than that. So we're going to disrupt another industry. One of the uh, lines that will um, probably benefit the most from talking about today is the low volume R&D equipment and prototyping services because I grew up at MIT. I graduated from him so many times. I want to give back. And we have every piece of equipment that we need to do this. And we have five months to do it here, maybe 10. Thank you. <laughs>